All right, I'm going to try and do this in one take so I can have at least some stream tonight. If I don't get it, it is what it is. So normally uh, around times like this, I always make I try to make a video uh, where you can take advantage of something like really cool in game for FGO. This is the last time we had something like this was five months ago. And we only had a day to actually roll out and do everything for it. This time we have a full week. And not only that, we have rail casting. This is this is the time to really take advantage of it. And the best part is we've had two lotteries in between when this happened and now. So a lot of people should have a ton of FP uh, ready for starting Friday. What I'm talking about is a combination of the Learning with Manga collaboration, because if you look in the, uh, where is it? Summoning campaign, friend point summoning. There is a one star on rate up. That alone gives you 15 servant coins per copy, while this has an increased rate up over other one stars so the easiest type of servant to summon you now get a shit ton more servant coins and more of them. not only that we also get xp ce's for just summoning in this pool so while you get more copies of this you can level up all your great five star ce's up to level 50 60 80 100 and if you have millions of FP, you're going to have a lot of these. You're going to be making a bunch of CE bomb. But that's not the cool part. If that was it, we would have I would have released this video last week before the event even started. It's in combination with uh, the 20 million downloads. And right here, you get double uh, two times chance of getting uh double xp or triple xp so for leveling ce's you have a very good chance to clear like get the ce from like level 15 for an mlb five star to 100 in a literal fraction of the cost for servant coins you are going to be able to cast multiple rails, maybe four plus off the servant coins of just one servant. And that's the huge appeal for a more hardcore player that you have this wombo combo. We had Valentine's Day, so there's even more CEXP than there was for um, the rerun for Guda Guda 5. I just wanted to get the most important part out of the way for this video before I actually like really break down this campaign because this video is not really about Bunyan. I shouldn't have to explain Bunyan. You just play the event. It, it's like summer five, uh, summer six, like infinite farm, depending on if you keep doing the nodes. Um, where is it? Uh, I think uh, yeah like i shouldn't have to explain this. so let me go over this campaign and everything else that comes with it because it's not just the double xp so we get all this stuff this is the standard for a download ca campaign uh xp apples qp better apples foes and a temple and then for uh just logging in for five days this good shit the probably biggest update for na is getting copper cobalt apples i i guess we're calling them cobalt because they're blue they kind of got it that like they're called bronze cobalt apple on jp they're called bronze apples america 
Americans are not gonna see this and think Braun. They're not, so they call them Cobalt. Cobalt. What these are, are you store AP and you can use it at any time you want. And it's at 40, which is basically you store up runs. You store up runs for an event because the highest difficulty node and most of the nodes honestly are about 40 AP. So you can bank them during, I hesitate to say during a dead period. I want to say when you can't play, not when you don't want to play, when you can't play. The reason being is there is a very limited amount of these. If you spend four months not playing the game, you are not going to have these for when you actually need it. And it's, and it's not for situations where I have to go to work. I mean, oh, I don't want to do this right now. This node's so boring. There's nothing to do. At least get three runs in for the day so you get your daily progress. Don't make six apples in one day because you will literally burn through all of the supplies before you know it. Multiple times I've had it where I'm, I got, I legit actually got lazy and just didn't feel like logging in. So that when I actually needed these, like I was on vacation um, and it was a shitty laptop, it took forever to do the nodes. Instead of being able to make bron uh, bronze apples, I had to fucking sit there for 30 minutes playing scuffed FGO, run, like playing it like it was on a phone from 2016. It was running that poorly. You never know when you actually need these until you need them. You can say that about a lot of things, but for these in particular, it shows so much. Now, the best part about these is that when you make a new account, you can bank all the AP you get when you're leveling up as stupid fast as you can. Because if you remember, you leveled up so fast, you overfilled to the point you had like 200 AP over like 40. And you literally just, if you, and for part one, you literally cannot burn that AP fast enough. And you also can't do nodes that cost 40 AP until your max is 40. For new players, this is awesome, but they're probably not going to realize it. For veterans, if you get lazy, you're going to fuck yourself over when you actually need this shit. So just play, use these smart. Don't be a fucking dumbass and pop apples and then realize, realize, oh, I actually don't feel like playing now. And then you make uh, cobalt apples. You literally just wasted your shit. Uh, ch ch uh, yeah, this is blah, blah, blah. I actually have a reason to spend mana prisms a lot. Yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, if you do these, if, like if you have, if you're up to date, like you got a free rare prism and uh, all this stuff immediately. You can get this if you don't already have it. You get the Jolter costume, which I'm so happy about. It's, we're not getting her animation update, but we're that is probably locked to uh, Ordeal Call 2 simply because simply because Jolter is such a huge part of it. Like they brought a shit ton of animation updates two years ago. Uh, yes, actually two years ago. Um, summer 5 or 5th uh, anniversary they brought up all the animation updates up to year seven early uh unfortunately this it's not gonna happen again for jolter it, because it's way too tied to story but this is a really nice costume this is like how jolter is seen most of the time wearing this dress um yeah I, i'm just happy it's finally time i my jolter i i raised her good and now she gets to look good Uh, 
Oh, okay. So, speaking of Jolter, she's on right up here. Um, for me, this is just terrible timing. Jocks. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I, I literally can't. If I try summoning for this character, I am going to put myself in to a financial pickle and unlike jp jock is not the highlight servant for this account she's just not when she gets her buff i'll probably summon for her then or at another time when it's just better for me but the other servants on here i don't I don't think they are must summon. If you don't have Castoria, summon for Castoria. And Babanshi. Wait, why is. Why is Sith here not Bargus? One second, chat. All right. So I just double checked on the site. Uh, Bargus is supposed to be here. It's just she's not. But this is Castoria with a triple rate up between Babanshi, Bargus, and Percival. All four, if you get any of these four servants, you're going to be good for the niche they're in. Uh, Percival, great farmer. Babanshi, great single target. And also farmer uh, when you need, like, single target for boss and then single target for farming. Uh, Bargus, great solo. Uh, she'll be even better when Mighty Chains come out. And then Castoria is literally the best servant in the entire fucking game. Once you get her, your life is at least five times easier, I'd say. Uh, seeing as if you've watched me play FGO recently for NA, you'll see me plug suiting in Morgan and Trunk Sisters as a substitute to Castoria. That's how fucking broken she is that two other five stars are needed to do a fraction of what she even does. And it's not it's not farming. It's literally everything. It doesn't need to be an arts team. You would literally use her for any kind of multicore over Vich or Scotty. You would pick Oberon. You would pick Vich Darkness over regular Koi and Skaya or Scotty. In a lot of cases, not Ruler Scotty, OG Scotty. Ruler Scotty is a bit of a different story. But if you do not have Castoria, this is one of her better banners. If you're looking for any of these, uh, Babanshi, uh, Percival, Bargus, if you're looking for any one of them in particular, you might want to wait for a different banner. But if you don't care which one in particular you get, this is probably like one of the better banners you can summon for i really really like all three of those four stars and it's castoria now if you already have mp1 that's your choice if you want to summon for mp2 there is an actual reason so if she gets drained she at least won't she'll be able to mp next turn and big attack buff too that's a lot less important though yeah So that is the summoning part. Now, last thing I want to talk about is this SR ticket. I have done plenty of these in the past. Plenty of, um, or at least there was one for the last collector and I do the tier list. I'm not gonna break down what servant you should summon for. You are going to pick whichever servant you want. I'm just going to tell you my mindset for, my, for which one I'm picking. Because how I pick is probably different from how you're picking. I'm not picking any permanent servant on here, which is a lot of them. So immediately, anything that's not story locked off the table. If I can summon it on any other banner. Why would I waste my ticket to summon for when I have like a, A, I could wait for them on rate up with a good five star 
or B, I just get the I get spooked. There are no limited servants on here. These are all servants you can get at any time as long as you play the story. But story locked are significantly harder. But they kind of go on rate up a little more often. That's what I've noticed. It's just that there are way more permanents. My other condition is that I can't have the servant on any of my other accounts. eventually i will my na account is gonna have like most of the servants eventually i need to be in a better spot monetarily before that can really happen but i'm definitely getting a lot closer than i would have thought so the story locked servants choice for me is emia alter and edison both of these servants will be on rate up with servants I actually kind of would summon for. Uh, Edison goes on rate up with Tesla next year as like, um, for the lotto, right? For the Ilya Fest lotto next May, Tesla and Edison are gonna go on rate up together. This, this November, Emia Alter is going to go up with Moriarty. And those are two five stars I've never gotten. So for me, and yeah, the issue is that Tesla. I want to say goes on rate up less than Moriarty. I also kind of like Moriarty a whole lot more. And then again, on this account in particular, I have an MP5 Gilgamesh that I'm slowly trying to get up to like closer to 120. Why would I actively try and summon for Tesla? if I have his direct competition like that. Now, Edison goes on rate up with a bunch of other servants too. But the thing is, a lot of those banners, I normally wouldn't be summoning. I believe he goes on rate up with Da Vinci right before the arcade collab. But I am not summoned for any of those units on that collab except Draco and Tiamat. That is, it would be a horrible choice for me to make to try to summon for um, Edison then when he gets his next buff. I don't really have direct competition for Moriarty. So that just sounds like a better rate up for me to summon on. I'm also probably not summoning for Britomart uh, this uh, November, December. It kind of makes even more sense that I would just summon for Moriarty at a time I'm pretty much done summoning for. I'm probably going to get Koen Shaku. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm probably going to get Koen Shaku. Uh, which is the five star uh, assassin that comes out for Halloween this year. But like Moriarty, I love that fucking costume. I love that costume for Moriarty. So for me, I'm summoning at it. For you, summon for any servant on here you want. I do preface that you should go for story lock because you can't get spooked by them but at the same time just because something is permanent doesn't mean you're gonna get them my personal on jp is still mp1 after all these years doesn't help i stop summoning but if me someone that wailed on jp still only has mp1 percival there are a bunch of like anyone that wasn't wailing probably doesn't have high copies of them 
I'm not saying that you choose Percival now. Uh, if you are go like if you are going to pick Percival, Baba and she or Vargas from this ticket, I would advise probably summon for Castoria first. Then, like if you don't have them now, you probably didn't summon on the Lost Belt uh, six banners. So maybe try your hand there before you pick here. Then you summon on Castoria, and then you get five copies of Bob and she, and you're like, well, fuck. Um, yeah, if you have cleared through like the Lost World set and everything, you should not be picking any of these CEs for your ticket. You shouldn't go for one of these. Whichever ones you don't have MLB, just pick it. The only reason you'd even have these is you summon on Lost Belt banners or you roll on story for some godforsaken reason if your name isn't Keon. Um, but yeah. Make sure to do the reactions. It's, it's a free multi. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this. Hope I gave you guys some insight on what really should be doing the next week for FGO. Like Bunyan events pretty much over. And JP is going to be extremely busy because this drops the same exact day tomorrow when this video comes out as the, the collab for this year, which is one of the early tight moon uh series i believe i believe which of i believe what uh mahoyo is like one of the early ones i could be wrong about that people are hyped to shit for that they're they needed to get bunion done because they knew how excited people would probably be for na i don't know they they kind of they kind of stagger na and jp enough that i don't think it's a coincidence uh probably some kind of scheduling na people they know a lot of people on na do play on jp so there probably is some thought into dating or the dates for everything all right i want to at least get some kind of stream tonight i will see you guys in the next one peace thank you for making it to the end of this video if you enjoyed drop a like or sub Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.